Hello and welcome to our flip video lesson, Building Power and Pyramids, Lesson 4.02. Our lesson details for 4.02 are your Human Odyssey reading pages 102 to 107, your Student Guide Workbook pages 96 to 98, your OMS assignment is Assessment 4.02, and the topic is Egyptian Gods, Pharaohs, and Pyramids. So what are we learning about today? We are learning that, uh, or we're going to describe the Egyptians' fascination with the afterlife, describe the reasons for building the pyramids, sphinxes, and mummifying bodies, explain the origins and significance of the term Pharaoh, and then identify the major gods of Egypt and their relationship to nature. Lesson Introduction, Building Power and Pyramids. For centuries, people have marveled at, Egyptians, at Egypt's pyramids, the oldest and largest stone structures in the world. It's hard to believe the Egyptians built these giant monuments without modern machinery, metal tools, explosives, or even workhorses. But why did the Egyptians go to so much trouble to build the pyramids? Why did they spend precious resources on projects that took thousands of workers 20 or 30 years to complete? We're gonna go ahead and learn about that here during this lesson. So the Sumerians built ziggurats and the Egyptians built pyramids. If you remember, a ziggurat is, is a temple made of sun-dried and baked bricks. It's a temple for the city's god, decorated with paint and sometimes gems, and it was a center for city life. The pyramid um, is one of the oldest and largest stone structures in the world. Uh, it was a royal home for eternity. Some still stand today, and sometimes they're covered in white stones to gleam from a distance. And then both of them, what they have in common, they were both constructed without using modern machinery, which is beyond insane to me, um, inspired wonder and awe in the people, then and do, still now, and required great organization and division of labor to complete. Egyptian pharaohs. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt were the supreme leaders of the land. They were like kings or emperors. They ruled both upper and lower Egypt and were both the political and religious leader. The pharaoh was often thought of as one of the gods. And ancient Egyptians explained the mysteries of nature as the actions of many of their gods. <music> student guide questions. Now it's time to open your student guide and you'll open it up to page 96. So you'll actually see page 96 is on less the lesson for 4.01, but we're going to actually answer those questions today during this lesson, 4.02. And there's not a lot of room to write, so if you need to get another piece of paper, or you need to write along the edges, you are welcome to do that. Question number one, why did the Egyptians call their king Pharaoh? The Egyptians believed that each of their kings uh, was the god Horus who had come down to rule on earth. They revered their god king so much that they thought it was disrespectful to speak about him directly. So instead of mentioning their ruler himself, they used the word Pharaoh, which means palace or great house. Number two, what power did the Pharaoh exercise? He was the head of government, general of the army, and chief priest. And he also ruled as the god Horus. Question number three, for whom did the Egyptians build the pyramids and why did they build them? Build them? The Egyptians built the pyramids for kings, queens, and other royalty. The pyramid was a tomb and also a home for the next life. Question number four, why did Egyptians mummify bodies? Egyptians mummified bodies because they believed that people would use their bodies in the afterlife. Question number five. What is a sphinx and what was its purpose? A sphinx is a stone statue with the head of a man and the body of a lion. The Egyptians built sphinxes to stand guard over temples and tombs, including the magnificent pyramids. Question number six. Describe the, describe the process of building the pyramids. First, the Egyptians used wooden hammers, copper chisels, stone mauls, and saws to cut huge limestone blocks from quarries. Next, they hauled the blocks to the building site. There, some stone masons smoothed the sides and squared the corners of the blocks before other gangs pushed them into place. After the bottom layer of blocks was set, workers built long ramps of earth and brick, and sled, cru sled crews dragged more blocks up the ramps to make the next layer. As they finished each layer, they extended the ramps so they could keep building upward. After all the layers were in place, the workers sometimes covered the side of the pyramid with white stones to make it gleam in the desert sun. 
And here we come to our reading page section. Do make sure that you take time to read pages 102 to 107. There's a lot of additional detail in there that I do not provide in this flip video. Important words to remember. And you'll find this in your, those reading pages as well. Re was the Egyptian god of sun. Osiris was the Egyptian ruler of the dead. Isis was the Egyptian goddess who was known to heal children. And then Nut was the Egyptian sky goddess. And here we come to our quote section. Historic continuity with the past is not, that is not correct. It should be, is not a duty. Sorry, I, I have a little typo there. Is not a duty. Uh, is, it is only a necessity. So that should be historic continuity with the past is not a duty. It is only a necessity. Sorry about that typo there. Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. I will make sure that is corrected for the PDF. And thank you so much for joining me today. As always, stay fighting, stay positive, stay brave, stay ambitious, stay focused, and stay strong. Have a great day.